Hello everyone, Lirio here and today we are going to analyze if you should get and build this old. Well, the first thing you should know is that, yes. Ok, ok, for real now. First, I want to stress that you should play however you like and with whoever you want. Not getting dissolved won't ruin your account, your loved ones won't leave you and your crops won't wilt. Still, the question remains. Why is Zold considered such a staple character and, more importantly, how to understand her? I must warn you that I'm not a therapist, but I'll try my best to explain. Isolde is an offensive support and one of the few who can perform a lot of jobs and excel in all of them. In order to understand Isolde, first we need to start with her passives. True to her concept, the singer has three phases that follow the structure of an opera, prelude, interlude and finale. The phases advance based on how much heat Isolde has accumulated. What is heat? First, a refresher on the burn mechanic. Burn is a negative status that reduces healing taken by 15% and can hold up to 30 stacks. At the end of the round, half of the stacks are consumed to inflict damage. The half consumed is then converted into heat for result. At first sight, getting all those stacks may sound like a hassle, but it's actually quite simple. Isolde's presence alone allows her allies to inflict burn when attacking. This happens through the pre-ignition buff, applied passively every round. If you want to get stacks even faster, use teammates who can apply burn with their kits, like Spatudia, Ulu and the upcoming Jewel. At Insight 1 or higher, after reaching Interlude, once one enemy reaches 6 stacks of burn or more, Isolde will cast Intermezzo, a follow-up attack. At Insight 3, once Isolde reaches Finale, she will grant both Pregnition and Power Burst to her allies every round. Twirling Melody is Isolde's first skill, a mass attack that gains higher penetration rate once Isolde reaches interlude and finale respectively. This will be her main damage source if you are playing her as a carry. Desired Freedom is a debuff that reduces the critical defense and reality defense of all enemies. This is Isolde's main skill if you are playing her as a support, and you should keep the debuffs up every time your team is attacking. Isolde's ultimate, Choking on Blood, inflicts 5 stacks of burn on all enemies, with additional 5 stacks on the main target. It also applies Rousing Morale on all allies, a powerful buff that runs plus 50% damage bonus. Finally, she ends her performance by casting her follow-up attack, Intermezzo. Isolde works fine at Portray 0. Like most 6 stars, her best portray is Portray 2, as it allows her to reach Finale faster. However, both this and all her other portrays only matter if you should use her as a main carry, and even so, it's not a must. Isolde's tailored side tube is Knock on the Door. It can be obtained at the event shop and will be added to the regular shop on patch 2.0 once Isolde is added to the standard rooster. Keep it at Amplify 1 if you are using Isolde purely as a support. However, if you want to use her as your main damage dealer, Amplify 5 will make a big difference. Blasphemer of Night and Balance Please are other good options. In the case of Balance Please, Isolde won't use the Ultimate Might stat but the passive offering up to 24% damage bonus is a good deal, especially if you had already invested in this Psy tube. Still, try to stick with Knock on the Door unless you have no resources to build it and already have one of the others ready. A final cheap option is the 5-star Psy tube Yearning Desire. Isolde works well with both attack and critical builds. She is often placed in critical-oriented teams and if you are using Knock on the Door, you can favor the critical build most of the time. If you are using other Psy tubes, then the attack build is the better choice, as it will increase her passive damage through burn and intermezzo. As a spirit character, Isolde can be considered a general support who won't conflict with the team Aflatus. In most cases, 
She will take over a six spot in team building, as she offers more offensive and direct increasing damage than him. Be careful when pairing Isolde with Tooth Fairy, as their debuffs conflict and can overlap. They still work together, but keep this in mind. The best combo with Isolde, especially if you want to boost a reality damage dealer, is definitely Get Yen. Together, they can provide on ideal conditions on enemies up to minus 50% critical defense, minus 30% reality defense, and on allies, plus 90% damage bonus for reality characters, or plus 70% damage bonus for mental characters, and tons of passive damage from their respective passives and extra attacks. The ideal conditions refers to using Isolde's debuff at rank 3 and having both Getian's debuff and Array, as well as using Isolde's ultimate. I was gonna call this one Sheer Heart Attack because of its burst potential, but decided to keep two songs from the Anaita at the Opera album. <clears throat> Spatadia is Isolde's best partner in damage, hands down, but this team concept also works with other burst damage dealers, such as Lilia, Centurion, Melania, Bloney, Jessica, Sweetheart, or even Eagle. Ezra is the sustain here to further increase damage dealt, critical damage, and avoid the conflict with Tooth Fairy. But you still can opt for using Tooth Fairy instead or other healer if you don't feel safe. In the fourth slot, Getian is the ideal candidate, but you can use pretty much any buffer, debuffer, or other healer. Examples include A Knight, Desert Flannel, Cornbloom, Medicine Pocket, and ENC. The follow up team. This is basically Junyan Zhu's national team with Isolde replacing 6. You can bring any healer for sustain and adding 37 as the fourth slot to basically summon a deadly helicopter. As mentioned before, Isolde can also act as a support for mental damage characters, especially if they naturally have high critical technique. Isolde can support and amplify Calabona's damage while costing little AP. Balloon Party can be swapped for Ezra to maximize critical damage as a variation of the Bohemian Episode team. Charlie can also be the carry here in Calabona's place, preferably with Ezra alone. In this case, instead of amplifying an already high critical potential, using this combo with Charlie fixes her problem of low crits and brings her damage potential to a whole new level. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe if you wish to support my work, and consider checking the join button for extra perks as well as helping keep the channel up. I hope this video has been useful and see you in the next one.